Hey guys, I'm Austin Bertram, and today I'm on Musicians on the Record. So, let's hit it. One, two, three. This is huge, Musicians on the Record. Bring it on. Hey, welcome to Musicians on the Record. I'm David Ward. This is the show where we get the musician's story, and I'm so excited to have Austin Bertram on the show. You know him from his YouTube channel. It's ABB Drums. Is that right, Austin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. And uh, so many great features on that. Study the Greats, uh, which is very cool. I want to get into that today. But okay. I also love your... the the mixing and recording of drums. That's where I first started connecting with you and watching okay. the YouTube channel. Let me just actually begin with what made you start a YouTube channel to begin with? Okay. Um, well, just to give you my backstory, I suppose. Yeah, please. Uh, I started playing drums when I was like 16 or 17, somewhere around there. Started taking it more seriously in my early 20s. Moved out to LA, went to Musicians Institute in 2008, graduated from there, and I hung around LA and I was playing with, uh, I played in a variety of bands. I played in a cover band and a jazz band, and then I got into a couple progressive metal bands. Wow. And so I did that for a while, six, seven years, and then after my last band situation kind of dissolved, I basically just decided to start doing my own thing. And that's when the YouTube channel started. Hmm. Yeah, so it, it kind of was just born out of frustration from playing in bands. And also, uh, I had been accumulating the gear to, to do that without even really knowing I was doing it. I kind of just got all this stuff to, to record myself for my bands uh, for tracking sessions. And then I just kind of converted that over to recording everything for YouTube wow. and that's how it all started. Do you remember what was your first video and how that whole process went, what you learned? Well, my, yeah, the first four videos on my channel are four tracking sessions from the last band I was in, okay. which was a progressive metal band. So those were the first four videos I put up. And then after that, it's kind of more experimentation. I was doing all kinds of different things, trying to do, gear comparisons and reviews and all kinds of different stuff so that's where it went from there yeah, it's, it's very cool it's a very cool channel if you haven't seen it check it out i want to talk more about that but i also what you mentioned before let's go back to your story from the beginning mm -hmm. around that when mm -hmm. did that spark or that inspiration of music hit you and especially with the drums well i didn't start playing until till my teens, 16, 17, which is a little bit later than, than a lot of people. Um, but it really started because <laughs> my friend, his name's Casey, if he sees this. Okay. What's going on, Casey? Uh, he actually, he was getting into guitar at that time. So we were both, you know, 16, 17. And he found his older brother's friend's drum set in their basement. And he pulled that thing out and set it up in his room. And I went over there one day and, and sat down to play. And it was just, it was just like a mm. nuclear bomb went off wow. <laughs> inside me. And, yeah. 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 And I didn't know why. I didn't know how to play it, obviously. But I felt like it was something I could do. And it was just a snowball from there. Okay. I was over there playing with him every day and practicing stuff. And we were playing deftone songs and all these all these weird like hard rock songs that we were into at the time and that's just where the whole thing started yeah i mean that's great because i i was curious about who were some of your influences whether just musically or drumming wise as well yeah when i was younger uh tool was a really big influence for me sure. i was into the progressive like progressive rock progressive metal those kinds of those kinds of bands so i was into Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater, Danny Carey from Tool, uh, Neil Peart from Rush, Zeppelin, yeah. F-Tones, just that whole that whole kind of mix. But yeah, those were my starting influences. 
amazing and all amazing yeah. drummers who you just named, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And so when you graduated high school, what was that conversation like with mom and dad as far as like, mm -hmm. I want to go to Musicians Institute and study drums? Uh, well, I didn't really go until uh, 2008. So I was already in my early mid 20s before I decided to go out to uh, Musicians Institute. So I was, old, I was already old enough yeah. to where it was kind of more of a my own decision I suppose sure. but um but yeah I didn't really start taking it seriously like I went to regular college after high school uh and did that whole thing because I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to do yet I wasn't serious enough about drumming to really see that as a, a career and especially the area that I came from it's not a musical place you know there's no gigs and and things like that so it I knew if I did want to to do this drumming thing, I was gonna have to get out of there eventually. But that wasn't really, I wasn't really ready for that yet. Okay. At that where, time. Where was that, Austin? Uh, so I'm originally from Proctorville, Ohio. It's a really small town in Ohio. Uh, it's kind of, it's where West Virginia, Kentucky, and Ohio all meet. Okay. Cool. So it's a very kind of Appalachian uh, place, but. I love it there, and that's where I'm from. Beautiful. Right? But yeah, there's no, but there's no music scene or or anything like that. So if you wanted to, to try to, be some kind of musician, you kind of yeah. have to get out of there sure. if you want to play with other people. So right. that's, that's yeah. where, uh, my decision to to move out to LA came from. <laughs> and and what were you doing for a, a day job, uh, sort of a real job before going for it with music? Well. When I was back in Ohio, I was uh, a waiter. I waited tables, bartended, you know, restaurant stuff. And uh, when I was in L.A., after I had graduated from Musicians Institute and I was playing in bands and stuff, I was working part-time in retail. Hmm. I won't say the exact name of the company, but it's a computer store, basically. Okay, got it. A large computer retailer. I see. All right. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. But, yeah, I worked part-time in in that for six or seven years basically until i, I moved up here uh, last year sure all, all those things we need to do to pay the bills while we're yeah going for it with music right so, yeah yeah what? you gotta you gotta have some kind of part-time right. gig until you get some yeah. more income happening you bet no, no yeah. question yeah what was that like for you uh, any kind of culture shock moving from that place in ohio to la uh not as much as I thought. It was just a lot of, it was just a lot more of everything. Uh, not not necessarily a, a culture shock, okay. but it was just kind of more sensory overload. Yeah. You know, more cars, more people, more sound, right. more lights, the, the whole deal. But uh, but the people that I met at school were all super cool. Mm -hmm. Got along fine. It wasn't it wasn't really big culture shock but I did get I still today get a lot of comments on uh, my accent what which accent? is definitely definitely much less now than it was when I first came out to LA a lot of people are just like where are you from <laughs> and I'm like Ohio and they're like okay but it's but, interesting because I could see you as just a real uh, California guy because you're just very relaxed I have the impression that you just kind of meditate and you're just a, a relaxed kind of guy so yeah well I do all those things okay. well there you go <laughs> I meditate and I am in California now so right. there you go but, nice. uh, but before I was just kind of a I want to say a country boy but mm -hmm. just a small town guy from Ohio sure. you know Sure. Nothing wrong with that. That's great. Yeah. All, all part of it. So, mm -hmm. so obviously you get to Musicians Institute and I want to talk about that and, and sort of what you learned and some of the teachers. Were you self-taught before then or were there some important teachers that came along for you before Musicians Institute? Um, I was mainly self-taught. I briefly took some private lessons with the head of percussion at Marshall University which is in Huntington, West Virginia. Okay. Um, I just walked into his office one day and I was like, I need some lessons. And so I, I took some private lessons with him cool. and we did some, some jazz things, some jazz studies. 
And, but other than that, it was basically self-taught until I came out to the Musicians Institute. Okay. And what was that experience like? It was awesome. Yeah. I have no regrets. I, I look back, back at it as a very uh, positive experience. And uh, I don't really think I'd be able to do exactly what I'm doing now yeah. if I hadn't gone there to do that. Yeah. So for people out there that are, that are thinking about it, it's not it's not something you have to do but if you have the right kind of uh personality and and you're more of an academic kind of person which which i tend to be uh i kind of like to be a student you know of the craft and and really get in and and kind of learn everything down on the the most foundational levels you know so how to read music how to write music all those kinds of things I kind of had to go to, to MI to, to figure out. So that's, that was kind of the main thing that uh, you get from it is they give you the foundation to teach yourself anything afterwards, after you graduate. Yeah. And how and so, long, how long of a program is that Austin? Year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah. The one that I did. Yeah. yeah it's called the associate of arts, I believe. So yep. Year and a half. And, and what, were, what were the main takeaways for you and any important teachers that you connected with? Kind of the, the stuff that I was going over, mainly the reading and the writing. Um, I didn't network as much as some people or as much as I should have probably. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. That's always been a weakness of mine is I tend to isolate myself away and, and study stuff okay. very academically, but I don't go out and meet people and, and get into band situations as much as I should. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So for me, that was kind of the headspace I was in when I was there. So, okay. but I took away a lot of, uh, a lot of foundational things, you know, how to, how to read, understanding note values and their relationships to each other, different styles of music. Um, Playing, in, playing with bands in a very uh, structured setting. So the first, kind of the first class you, you, uh, you go into when you get there is called Rhythm Section Workshop. Yeah. And it's basically you playing drums with a guitarist and a bass player to a click with a chart, you know? So that's just right off the bat, that's what you do. Yeah. Wow. And, and so, so they, that's, that's kind of a unique experience that a lot of people don't have very often is playing a chart with real musicians on a stage in front right. of, you know, a classroom. Sure. Especially with a click, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. With a click. Yeah. So it's so, very interesting. Um, my favorite class, I think looking back on it was a uh, Rob Carson's technique class. Hmm. So anyone who's at MI, they know who I'm talking about. Rob Carson. He's a, he's a legend. Okay. Um, he was a snare drumming okay. world champion way back in the day. And uh, he, he put together this technique class and it's all very hardcore. Uh, it's kind of like drum core stuff, only snare drum solos, Amazing. technique, building up the wrists, building up the fingers, using these big marching sticks and everything like that. It's, it's very much, it felt like martial arts training. Really? Wow. In a way, just the way he did it. Yeah. And uh, that was my favorite class, actually. That's great. Yeah. So there was an expectation. You said the first class you were there, you sat down and, and played with someone to a click reading music. There was an expectation that you would already know how to read some music? Uh, yeah. They Before you enroll in the school or, or you set up your classes, they give you kind of a reading test. Okay. Uh, to see where you're at. Yeah. And that's to determine your placement in the program. And if you're going to go into the level one reading or level two or whatever. Sure. Um, so they kind of assess your reading. You don't really need to know how to read when you go because um, even on that first day going into rhythm section workshop, uh, they kind of the teacher kind of explains what the parts are and what you're going for so it's not like it's just get up and read a chart it's them kind of walking you through what the goal for the song is and what the charts mean or what the drum parts are supposed to sound like and stuff so 
you kind of just put it all together and you can you can figure it out even if you can't really read yeah. yet sure so, yeah. you know. learn as you go right yeah yeah you kind of just have to but I, I knew how to read a little bit before i went out there so it wasn't completely a foreign concept to me got it got it so, I mean, obviously you went and, uh, you know, I'm curious, I, I love talking to musicians about this as far as, you know, what was your original dream? What was your original goal? And maybe you're still working towards that or it's shifted a bit, but. Yeah, it's definitely shifted, I suppose. Uh, but I just wanted to be the best drummer I could be, really. I, I didn't see myself being a rock star or anything like I, I didn't think I was going to get myself into some kind of high level gigging situation I just wanted to to get as good as possible at my craft and that's kind of uh that was always my main thing was to just let me see how far I can take this thing yeah well and I've, and I've experimented with different avenues you know playing in bands doing the online education thing, YouTube. So it's kind of steered me in a lot of different directions, but it's always just been about like, this is my craft. I just want to get as proficient in it as possible. Sure. Yeah. 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 And so that really shows, I think with your playing a on your YouTube channel, ABB drums, and obviously with study the greats, uh, both your playing and your reading and writing really comes in to that. Tell us about how that even got started. What was your inspiration for Study the Greats? Well, I really started it as just a way to expand my own vocabulary and my own skill set uh, with the transcriptions and, and things like that. Because I had always been, um, I guess, obsessed to a certain extent with watching all these guys like Vinnie Kaliuta and Weckl and Novak. I, I had always just watched so many hours of videos of all these different drummers playing. It was just part of what I did. And uh, I had all the, uh, you know, skill sets from Musicians Inst Institute. So I knew how to read and write stuff. And I was getting into uh, uh, drum notation inside Logic. So I figured out how to how to do transcriptions inside Logic uh, pretty efficiently. And so it just kind of became this fusion of all my interests. It was the drummers I love, plus wanting to expand my vocabulary, plus wanting to notate stuff in Logic and turn it into this kind of YouTube show, yeah. educational show, I guess. And that's just kind of how it started. Amazing. So it just went from a personal passion to uh, I want to share this. Do you remember your first one that you made? It was on a uh, Dave Weckl. Yeah, I did. I did the first two on Dave Weckl, if I remember correctly. Yeah, sure. great. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, there's a, a whole bunch. Like you mentioned, Billy, Vinny Caliuta, um, Billy Cobham. There's so many incredible ones. So yeah, yeah. It kind of turned into. I didn't really know exactly where it was going to go i was just like i want to study uh weckle and vinnie and and Benny Grev and like all my favorite drummers and all these fusion masters and stuff like that that's uh that's where it started and it's kind of just been snowballing from there and i've kind of been expanding my vision for it a little bit yeah. and so i have a lot of a list of drummers i want to get to okay uh that are a little bit different than what I have been doing. Okay. Um, Anybody you can share with us? Uh... Uh, well, right now I'm working on a John Bonham one. Oh, very cool. Uh, so, I, so I want to kind of get back to the real meaning of the name, study, study the greats, you know, like the real greats. So I'm trying to move away from uh, the younger modern guys because I had done some of those. I did Kiergo Borlai and Benny Greb. And those guys are younger I mean, younger to a certain extent, but uh, I kind of want us to to go back to studying some of the older guys, the Jazz Cats, and yeah. you know John Bonham, and and those kinds of yeah. the real like legends of drumming. Sure. Yeah. What is it? Can I ask what are you working on with Bonham? Which uh, which tune or group? It's a uh, it's an interesting uh, parrot at a lick from one of his Moby Dick solos. Uh -huh. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. so there's this really crazy paradiddle, these really fast paradiddle licks that he pulls out in, uh, at the beginning of that, um, the Moby Dick solo on YouTube, the most famous video. It's got four or five million views or something like that. That's really great. And I love how you get into it because it, for those who haven't seen it, you pick out a particular groove or lick or fill and uh, you just break it down. But I love because I'm watching these and, and I'm impressed with the video, but you're, you're in the background and you're just going, mm. you know, I love yeah. that when you do that. It's just great. Yeah. Like, yep, that I'm feeling that way too. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, I guess that's become one of the little signature things. <laughs> yeah, right. You got to trademark that, Austin. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose. How long does that take you? Because you got to practice that groove or fill or whatever it is as well, um, and then you got to tape it, record it, edit it, transcribe it, all of that. So, yep. It's mm -hmm. time. What are we talking about with that? <sighs> A lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. If uh, usually it takes me from the first con conception or the first starting to look at what drummer I want to do and what I want to break down from from that point to finished product, it could be a week and a half, two weeks, okay. somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have to figure out what I want to break down, which requires me to watch you know, lots of video. Uh, so hours of that. And then once I figure it out, I have to figure out how to, no, uh, how to notate it. Right. And that could take, sometimes I get it quickly. Sometimes it doesn't come along so easily. So I can take anywhere from a couple hours to more than that, sure. uh, depending on what it is. And then uh, I have to practice it. Right. Um, and that can take, Usually I'll practice something for three or four days, maybe more okay. in little chunks because I kind of need to, to sleep on it yep. for uh, a few days for it to start to kind of sink in. Yep. So I'll practice, uh, you know, three or four days on a piece and then I have to th build a lesson around it, you know, because it's, it's, it's a little bit more than just breaking down one lick. It's, it becomes more of a, a process Sure. of trying to explain in the simplest way how to go from not knowing what this is to playing this, right. whatever this is. So scripting it out and kind of walk, like thinking it through requires a lot of time for me. Yeah. Uh, but then once I kind of get that all down, then I kind of practice the video a little bit. So I kind of practice how I'm going to say everything, how I'm going to structure it. And then I go into production, and then that usually takes uh, like one full day to film everything, and then it could be another full day or two to edit. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's a process. Yeah, and well, the finished product is fantastic. I can hear how much work you, you're doing behind the scenes around that. Yeah. Can you say a little bit of some of your gear that you're doing? You're saying you're transcribing all of the music in Logic. You're talking about Logic yeah. Pro? Yep, Logic Pro 10. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So it has a transcription feature. Not well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So it has a it has a scoring feature. Okay. Um but it's not set up out of the box to be able to do drum notation. Okay. Um mm. so I actually made a video on my YouTube channel called Drum Notation in Logic Pro 10. Okay. I did that a couple years ago when I was first kind of figuring out how to set up logic to do that but it requires a lot of custom configuration inside logic to, to get it to be able to do drum notation um but once i figured that out it's the closest thing to the holy grail of drum notation for me it's way more uh, efficient and more fun to use than sibelius or finale or something like that um because basically, once you get it set up a certain way, all you have to really do is program the drums in MIDI in the piano roll using MIDI. And I don't really deal with the notation itself or the transcription itself. I'm just programming out the drums and singing, syncing it to the video and trying to hear everything and make sure it all lines up. And then when I sh uh, switch over to the score, it's already done for me. Wow. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got so it. I don't pull any notes in and... and right. 
uh, build the notation. I'm basically just programming out the drums and it does a notation for me. Oh, wow, that's great. Which I'll have is to check how out. It should be. It's way easier. That's I feel like that's how it should be, but right. <laughs> no none of these other software uh, notation softwares are, are like that. So Yeah, I'll have to check that out because I've been looking for some notation software and which one to use. So I'll check out your video on that. So Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, the other things that you have, Study the Greats is also now coming up on Drumeo. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about how that connection happened and where that's going. Yeah, we had been in contact and just kind of going back and forth because they, uh, they knew about me. They liked what I was doing. Obviously, it's great to be able to work with them as a smaller channel and whatever. So we had kind of just been in contact and we were trying to figure out how we could work together and, and do something. And uh, eventually Dave Atkinson just uh, reached out to me and, and kind of pitched me the idea of doing study the greats, but more uh, tailored for, for Drumeo. Yeah. And I was like, it sounds good to me. Let's, sure. let's do it. So right. that's kind of how it started. And, uh, yeah, so I did six, I've done, um, uh, like one season of six videos and they're releasing them, um, a little bit at a time on Drumio right now. It's great. Fantastic. And yeah. you, you did that in your studio or you went to the, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did that. I did that all here and then, um, just sent them the videos and they've put all their graphics and, yeah. and everything around it to, to make it yeah. match all the Drumio theme. That's right. But yeah, it turned out pretty cool. Yeah, I've seen a couple. I saw the first one on um, Billy Cobham and the one on Dave Garibaldi, I think, came out just recently. That was great. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did uh, Todd Zuckerman. Mm. Yeah, Todd Zuckerman and Garibaldi, I think, were the first two. Okay. And yeah, there's some more coming out after right. that. <laughs> How would you describe your drumming, Austin? Any particular genre or just pretty eclectic? I guess it's more fusion, fusion-y is the only way I can describe it, I suppose. Okay. Um, yeah, because I'm, it's always in the vein of, of like Weckl, Novak, uh, Vinny, that kind of style is how I always want to play like when I play, right? Yeah. So it's, it's more kind of fusion-y is yeah. the only way I would describe it, I suppose. Yeah, great. No, I love it because yeah. you do jazz really well and the fusion. And then I was watching uh, another video and you were starting really um, sort of this easygoing light thing. And then all of a sudden it just punched me in the head and it was like this hardcore metal thing. And I went, wow, that's uh, that was very different than I'd ever seen that so before. Oh, if, it, if that was one of my... Uh, tracking sessions for the progressive metal band and yeah yeah was that helix <laughs> animate yeah helix animate yeah mm -hmm. tell me about that experience and playing in a band it's cool you have a sense of community you know you got friends to hang out with so you kind of develop this this little uh friendship community thing so that's always cool but eventually people just get kind of caught up in their own things and nobody has time to meet up and, and things like that. So it just eventually, you know, kind of fell apart or, or fizzled out. But yeah, I always like playing in bands. It just uh, never turned into any kind of like real situation for me that was like a full-time job or something I could do forever it was always kind of like a, a temporary project sure for a while yeah. and uh but yeah I always like playing in bands and is that a, a goal are you playing now in a band or any goal in the future to be uh, no pretty much since I started the YouTube thing it, and that's all I've really been focusing on yeah. so I'm teaching part-time but I'm not I'm not currently playing in, in any kind of band at the moment okay um I was going to say, let's talk about your teaching and, and okay. people want to take lessons with you. How can they do that? 
Yeah, so I teach um, out of a little music studio nearby in San Jose here. It's called Unitone Music Studio. And uh, it's pretty new. It just opened basically at the time I started teaching. So the the owner uh, was looking for teachers to start to open the school, basically. And so I was new to the area. And it's only a couple miles from me. Great. So it's kind of like the perfect uh the perfect setup so i've been teaching out of there uh also i can teach out of here i just kind of prefer to go to a separate place for teaching just because it's my house and and all that kind of stuff so but yeah teach out of unitone uh i can do skype lessons if people want to do the skype thing uh and also i've got some I've got one lesson pack on my website, but I'm wanting to expand that much more in the future. So that's kind of my next endeavor is to build up the the website. That's great. But let's talk about that pack as well. And okay. let's tell folks where they can go to your website to, to get that. Yeah. You can just go to abbdrums.com. It'll be the first thing that, um, first thing that comes up. And, uh, if they wanted to go, there's a separate page under the, the title practice. Um, it'll be there as well, but right there on the front page is, is where it's at. That's great. And it's a practice, uh, a hand routine practice, the first one, correct? Yeah, it's a pretty, it's kind of a hardcore <laughs> uh, hand workout series. Okay. It turned out to be a little more elaborate than I anticipated when I started to make it. Okay. But uh yeah, it's it's built on the concept of um, playing to, to a click track that starts off pretty slow and easy and then gradually ticks up in speed until you're at kind of your breaking point or your max speed. So over the course of a couple minutes, a minute and a half to two minutes, um, it becomes this pretty intense workout. And it's um, so I, I, separated it into six different workouts and each one is kind of a different theme cool. and uh yeah it's just a it's, it's a good way to kind of drill some really simple patterns but really uh ingrain them into your dna <laughs> so to speak with That's just really the the foundational kinds of patterns it's not very complex in the in the patterns kind of towards the end of the workouts they start becoming a little more um complex but it's just really simple things single strokes double strokes paradiddles and just drilling those pretty hardcore which is what we have to do as drummers right and uh, yeah yeah Make yeah i think hard. a lot of people don't spend enough time just really doing a simple thing but for a long period of time and, and kind of pushing your max yeah. to, to, to go to a new level, to a, to a higher level. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's the first thing you teach someone when they come and see you uh, in person, especially? What, what are some of the first things you teach them? It depends on where they're at uh, as a player, because if they're a complete beginner, I have a couple younger students, um, but if they're a complete beginner, Usually I just talk about the drum set and kind of name all the pieces and, and show them kind of the uh, purpose for each part of the kit, which is new for some people. They don't even kind of understand what a drum set really is yet. Um, so it may start with that. Uh, it can go into just basic hand technique, how to hold the sticks, how to hit a, a drum or a practice pad. So that's usually like the first lesson is a tour of the kit, how to hold the sticks, and how to hit a surface, basically. <laughs> right, that's important, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The building blocks of it all, so. Yeah, yeah. and then it just progresses from there. Uh, I'll just teach them the simple, basic quarter note groove, and then eighth note grooves, and play along to, to simple songs with just a straight eighth note rock groove, and. And then it just builds from there. Right. The, the good Billy Jean beat is a good place. Yeah, to Billy Jean, yeah. <laughs> Island in the Sun by Weezer. Uh, uh, right. yeah. Some of the new, uh, the Daft Punk songs. Sure. Like Lose Yourself to Dance and all that kind of stuff. It just has that steady 
that steady beat that you can just kind of jam on. Sure. How important would you say that reading and writing is as far as playing? It depends on what you're going to do, because if you're going to just, if you're going to play in a band and it's not, um, well, how would I say this? If it's a band where you're just coming up with your own material and there's no charts involved or anything like that, if you're not going to be a hired gun, then you don't necessarily have to know how to read. A lot of guys don't know how to read and they're professional drummers, right? So it's not 100% required. But from my point of view, if you want to get as good as possible at the drums, then you really need to understand that kind of stuff because it's the only way you're going to be able to comprehend certain material mm -hmm. and, and certain, uh, certain things, I guess, or styles of music. It kind of uh, gives you the tools to understand everything that you want to. So that's really the benefit of learning how to read and write. Yes. Yeah. Well, and, and unless someone is just a savant and can play like Steve Gadd or Vinnie Caliuta, like you're doing and helping us, you really got to study what is happening there and break it down and, yeah. then, and practice it, right? There isn't, yeah. there isn't any shortcut around that. Yeah. But those fusion guys uh, like Vinny or Weckl or Novak, they know exactly what they're doing. Right. You know, they're, they – understand music right. they can read and 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 they know what's going on so i yeah. feel like if you want to be like a fusion guy or you, you want to be a working drummer that is going to deal with other musicians that are just going to give you charts and stuff like that you kind of have to to have that stuff together this i also found this on your i think it was your website too let's talk about the morgan J sessions and, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell about us this. how that got started. <laughs> uh he, he was a friend of a friend. Okay. And he was putting together this comedic this comedic album. Yeah. I guess he's a stand up comedian. Okay. But he make he makes these songs, comedic okay. songs. And he's putting together this album and I guess my friend he was looking for a drummer and my friend said, Hey my Austin plays drums, and so he just contacted me, and I was like, yeah, just send me the tracks, and I'll record on them and send them back to you. Fantastic. It's just a remote, a yeah. remote session situation, yeah. but uh, <laughs> those tracks are pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah, pretty nuts. Yeah. So is he in the same spirit as a uh, Richard Cheese? Do you know who Richard Cheese is? I don't, know. Uh, He's sort of another, well, he was in Vegas, like a lounge singer, but he was fairly blue. Um, okay. Yeah, so... That's the kind of uh, thing that I got from the Morgan J session. So yeah, yeah, it's a, <laughs> you kind of just have to watch it right. to understand, I suppose. But yeah, it's just it's comedic music. Sure. Yeah. Austin, how do you take care of yourself with all of this? You know, one of the things I talk about with my teacher Dom, as far as like balancing this whole thing with doing music, the business of music, having relationships, all of that. How do you do that? Still trying to figure it out. <laughs> tough it's one. tough. Yeah. Um, you kind of just have to keep everything going as best as you can. You know, you have to figure out how to make money somehow. So you got to just kind of flex around to, to figure that out. Um, relationships are difficult, especially for the way that I work and the amount of time that requires me sometimes to, to put into projects to get them done. I kind of, be, I'm a little bit obsessive mm -hmm. when I get involved in a project Okay. and I'm kind of just MIA for a few days or I'm just checked out. And so that can present some uh, friction in a relationship, mm -hmm. but eventually it smooth, smooths out. So it's kind of tough to balance getting things done and kind of being OCD about your work, but also, yeah. you know, spending time with yeah. other people and things like that. Um, so it's a tough balance. Yeah. Um, health, you got to just try to keep up with it as best you can. Try to eat well, try to work out if you can, which I haven't been doing as much as I should, 
but I'm going to try to get back into that. And you mentioned meditation. And meditation. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Again, something that's tough to keep up, kind of like a workout routine. You, right. you really have to consciously yes. set aside time to do that every day. And sometimes it just kind of slips by the wayside. Yeah. But if you can do it, definitely beneficial. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Calming, calming the nervous system, always a good thing. And then yeah. starting from there, that's a sort of place of power, especially on the drums. So, yeah. Especially uh, when you're kind of a creative professional. You really get sucked into your projects and you get really perfection. Uh, like I fall into the perfectionist trap a lot where I'm just kind of over analyzing like every little detail and sure. I just get frustrated a lot and things like that. Yeah. And you kind of just have to disconnect from that, that setting sometimes and just kind of chill, <laughs> just right. kind of chill out and, and not think about things for a little bit yes. and just kind of reset your nervous system because you get really tense and stressed out and stuff when you're in a project and right. if it's not going as well as you want or, or something like that, you just are kind of just in this like right. mode. So you kind of have to figure out a way to disconnect from that. Sure. And then yeah. sometimes coming back to it later can help a fresh set of eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you'll just step away from for a little bit and come back and you'll be like, Oh, this isn't as bad as I thought. Or, right. or you'll have a new, idea for what you want to do do with it it kind of depends but yeah, i think that's true for making music or, or making these videos that you're making that are part of music how do you get to that place where you know it's done or it's good or that hey this is good enough <laughs> a lot of times for me it's at the point of exhaustion <laughs> Got it. okay <laughs> that's when i yeah once i know i put as much into it as i possibly can then I'm I'm like, well, that has to be good enough. And then I just right. put it together and, and put it out. But usually I will just do something over and over and over until I'm kind of exhausted with it. Yeah. And then that's it. <laughs> and that's my stopping point, which isn't good. It's not really a good way to work because every project pulls too much out of me, more more out of me than it should. Mm -hmm. And so after I post a video, it'll take me like, a few days or a week yeah. just to recover sure right <laughs> you know? yeah. um and then i'll start thinking about my next video so i don't i can't pump out as much content sure. as quickly as i would like sure just because i put too much into every single thing that i do so i'm trying to figure out how to balance that a little bit better now how to put more stuff out there without going so ocd with it what do you do for breaks what do you do for fun not much really <laughs> i mean i'm either play the drums right <laughs> yeah play yeah because a lot of times when you get when you're involved in a project you're not playing as much right you know you may sit down for 20 30 minutes to film something sure but other than that you're editing or you're scripting or you're just visualizing what you're wanting to do and so a lot of this isn't drumming it's it's everything else right and so um when i want to take a break usually it's it's playing drums yeah exactly uh, i'm very similar to that because there is a lot of editing with this as well and drums right. my outlet and escape on that um mm -hmm. those skills that you do have though the recording and mixing and the video editing all, all just trial and error self-taught on that or did you yeah that was all self-taught um I spent a lot of time a few years ago, <clears throat> probably like five, six years ago, uh, watching stuff on lynda.com and groove3.com and, and just basically immersing myself in online tutorials uh, to learn how to use the logic and the final cut, uh, just mixing, video editing, pretty much anything I could find about those topics i would i would watch yeah. and uh after a few years of that i kind of had a better idea of what i was trying to do sure. well it, it's paid and then, off yeah and then once you start trying to make a youtube channel you know you kind of experiment with a lot of different things but after you know 70 some videos you kind of learn 
yeah. uh, some new techniques and new workflows and, and things like that. So it's just a constant evolution, just like any other craft, you bet. I suppose. You bet. Yeah. And then when you do get to drum, uh, just playing for fun, are you working on anything, practicing anything? Uh, sometimes I just play for fun. I'll just sit down and, and just improvise or jam for a little bit. Sometimes I film stuff for Instagram, right? Yeah. Which is pretty much just me right. <laughs> improvising again. Right. Yeah. Um, a lot of times I had to practice stuff for videos. Right. So a lot of my actual real practice now is just working on the content that I'm going to be filming. Sure. Right. Um, so I don't really practice it, like do general practice sure. very much anymore. It's either me just sitting down to play or me practicing what I'm going to film. Right. And sometimes I do uh, these remote tracking sessions for people. Mm, okay. So those are kind of a, a fun little yeah. break to get to play an actual song, yes. you know, instead of just a lick or just improvising to, to just play a song right. and uh, get back into playing music. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, I do that be- sometimes. And so it's just a, a combination of all those, all those things. That must be fun when they contact you to, to help them with a song or album. That must be very cool. Yeah. It's always, it's always an interesting break from, from all the other stuff. I do. It doesn't happen very often. You know, not as much as I would like, but, uh, uh, but yeah, when those little projects come in, it's, it's a fun little thing to do. Where would you like your music to go, Austin, as far as with your website or playing or teaching? Yeah. So I've been, I used to produce or compose music, uh, a lot more when I was younger and then I haven't done it for a few years but I'm getting back into it and I want to uh, basically compose my own tracks wow. to, to play drums to for the purpose of playing drums to them. Mm. And uh, I've already started. So I, I've produced one track and I've been playing around with it, trying to come up with some drum parts for it. Wow. But I think that's going to be my next step is to incorporate more, more of me playing music uh, into the channel and the website and things like that. Sure. But uh, I don't really have the time to to go out and find musicians and have them record or be in yeah. a band situation at the moment. Sure. So I'm kind of just going to do it all myself. That's great. Do you and, play, uh, play any other instruments? Do I play any other instruments? No. Yeah. No, I dabbled in guitar when I was younger, but once I got into the drums hardcore, I just dropped yeah. that and went straight into the drums. Sure. But I don't really play any other instruments. I don't play piano, but I have a MIDI controller yeah, and I can, I can compose tracks okay. in logic, even though I can't technically play piano. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be my next, that's kind of my next endeavor is to just build some backing tracks, uh, play to them, put them on YouTube and, uh, hopefully make the backing tracks available on my website for people to download if they want. It's awesome. Fantastic. Look for that on your YouTube channel and website coming soon. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So you're also, I mean, you're, you are a busy guy. You're writing for a modern drummer. What are you writing and how did that come about? Yeah. So I've been doing uh, a couple pieces for them. Uh, one's called style and analysis, okay. which is very similar to what I'm doing with the study, the great series. Um, and the other thing is called off the record where I'm basically just, um, finding break, breaking down snippets from whatever drummer's latest record, whatever the, whatever their latest record is. Nice. Um, so it's kind of just a, an academic article series where I'm breaking down things from these drummers. Awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a great connection, it sounds like, with the study of the greats, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, uh, I did an interview with uh, Orlando Drummer recently, and uh, he said it was, it was like a written version of study of the greats, and, and I right. think that's, yeah. that, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> no question. No yeah. question. And, and you're also connected with Vic Firth and doing some work for them. Yeah, I've uh, done a couple... Um, just remote mixing 
uh, sessions for them. And uh, I ended up doing the, the Matt Garska uh, stick release wow. video. Wow, cool. and, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. So that's been a good experience is to kind of get my mixing chops yes. up a little bit and work on material that, that isn't my own. Right. So that's been, that's been pretty cool. And I also yeah. saw on your website too, I wanted to mention uh, you, I don't know how, how you put it together so fast, but you put this, you went to the NAM show recently and yeah. you put together this video. Tell me about your NAM show experience and what that was like for you. Yeah. NAM was pretty awesome. So uh, we went down, we got a big Airbnb house with uh -huh. me and the Orlando drummer and Gabe from drum beats online and Dan from the drumming beat and uh Seamus from uh drum gab podcast and tj hartman so it's like six of us yeah. and we got this really nice airbnb house awesome. and uh it, basically we just hung out yeah. had all these other people come by and and hang out with us that that we all kind of knew from talking to each other online and stuff like that so uh it was really cool went to uh just walking around them meeting a lot of fans um it's pretty interesting it's kind of my first year going to nam since my youtube channel has been getting more popular yeah. i suppose yeah. and it's kind of weird to have people come up to you and you're like hey you're, you're austin and i'm like yeah <laughs> that's, so that's kind of like a new experience for me sure um but that was really cool uh did the drumio um announcement for the study of the greats at their at their booth they had a live streaming set up there yeah, that, was amazing. Did that and it was just i don't know it's just really cool because uh you know you talk to all these guys online you know on instagram or or whatever and you see what everyone's doing but it's not until you kind of meet in person it's like oh you're, i don't know it's kind of like a sense of community yes um, and they become your friends in a way that's right. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. It's 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 just fun to meet all these guys in person. Right. Yeah, yeah, very cool to have to have that connection in person, yeah. and then you're you're going back and doing your own thing. They're doing their thing, and mm -hmm. very cool, nice, mm -hmm. awesome. Let me also ask Austin if, for someone who is just starting out with music, even just someone starting out with drumming. What are the top one or two, maybe three things that you would tell them? as far as to, you know, the most important things, advice for musicians? Uh, I guess the main thing is to really just pursue the thing you're most passionate about and just go hardcore into it. Um, if you want to be a rock drummer, then study rock drumming a lot and study all the guys that came before you, you know, I guess study the greats that, that concept of, you know, looking at the history of how everything got to where it is and, and seeing who all the best players in the world are and study them. And you start to kind of internalize your own vocabulary and your own style and everything from having all these different influences so definitely study people um if you want to if you have an academic personality then maybe going to school for it would be a good option for you if you want to um, really learn the foundations of reading and writing and and how all that stuff works together i guess that's my main things yeah follow your passions and if you're academic then maybe go to school for it well, and I, and I think, just to say, I think your channel is so cool because guys who were, you know, before us, generation before, they talk about, you know, learning that music, studying the greats just on the record player, right? And what a gift it is for guys like us that we get to see the videos of all of these legends playing. And yeah. it's much easier to see that and, you know, right. you, you're teaching us Dave Weckl stuff. Uh, so right. I think you're doing an amazing thing for the drumming community and music in general by breaking that down. I really yeah. appreciate all your work and what you're doing. Keep it up. And I can't wait for the Bonham video. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Austin Bertram, thank you for being on Musicians on the Record.
Absolutely. Thank you for having me.